living in Duluth, Minnesota. And all it, took, yeah, all it took was one year because I discovered there was no summer there. Okay? It went from winter to a very long spring, to a very long fall, back to winter. Being right on the lake, it just never got what I considered warm. So that was enough. One year of that was enough for me. But I periodically attended a Unitarian church there. There was no unity, unity church in it. In fact, I would not been introduced to unity yet at that time. And I went to this Unitarian church one morning, and they were in between, in between ministers. And there was a guest minister from up in Evelyn, Minnesota, up on the Iron Range up there. And she gave a talk about the space in between, largely for this congregation, who was that, which was in that place. And what I remembered so much from her talk is she used the word limon, the root of the same Greek root of which is in the word limnology, which is the study of fresh water. And she spoke of Lyman as the place in between, fresh water being the place in between land. Okay? So this always stuck with me, this kind of Greek root, because I love roots of words, and this metaphor of the place in between, and how at any time we can be comfortable in the place in between. Even when we can't see, right? You let go of one shore and you're watching that shore. You're kind of hoping when you turn around, the other shore is going to be over here, and it's not. But now you've lost sight of that shore, and here you are, going, which way do I turn? I am so in between, I don't know what to do. Well, as I started re remembering this talk and thinking I would use a part of that to help me see the talk for this morning, I went online to look at the Greek word of the, of the Greek root of the word limnology. It has nothing to do with the place in between. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so all of a sudden I went, what is this anyway? This isn't my direction, exactly. So then I did what any good Unity student should do, is I went to my Unity books, right? I went to Charles Fillmore and I went to Myrtle Fillmore. And I just opened some chapters and opened some pages and started to read some things. And a whole new message about this place in between became very clear to me. Does the place in between feel like that sometimes? Yes. <laughs> not only can you not see either shore, but you feel like there's really something there trying to get you. Nipping at your heels and, oh, I really need to find that shore. I need to find that other place in order to be safe. Absolutely, it can feel this way. <laughs> This is Myrtle. This is Myrtle talking to us, not the picture. <laughs> but her words, what do you think you can accomplish by being tense or anxious? She says, I get such a kick out of reading, reading Myrtle and Charles Fillmore because they spoke and wrote a hundred years ago, give or take 10 or 20 years on either side of that. And the things, so much of the things I read from them are just so candid and so real for right now. What do you think you can accomplish by being tense or anxious? Tell me. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, does it make it better? No. no. Does it make it worse? Yes. Absolutely. It just makes it worse, right? Because now you're worried, now you're, your stomach is upset, now you can't eat, now you're eating more than you want to, whichever way that takes us. Or sleep, yeah. There's this energy bursting from you, but in such a way as to not be productive. More from Myrtle. So her advice to us is: instead of struggling in an outer way, let us go within and build a foundation for real success and prosperity and satisfaction. I'm sorry, could you give me a glass of water? I had some tea somewhere, but I have no idea where it is right now. So in, in this passage in the book, Myrtle goes on to talk about how we can use this place in between as a time to gather ourselves together, right? To leave that shore, to let that shore show up when it's going to, and ask, who am I? What is there in me that I need to grow and build? Thank you. Now, I don't know if anybody here is like me, but I have a number of days that I'm excuse me, moving around and so busy, I, I'm not going to say I don't have the time. I will say I don't take the time 
to sit and be still and consider who I am. What am I? What am I here about? What are my strengths? What are my gifts? What can I focus on? <coughs> what can I sit with in silence? So Myrtle says, what is going on with my throat? <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. These times in between, when we no longer have what we had, we're no longer where we were, and we don't know what's next, those are prime opportunities to sit and be still and consider, who am I? What am I about? To not be pulled and tugged and tossed, but maybe instead of seeing sharks, to enjoy, is anybody a sailor, been on sailboats? Mm -hmm. Some other kind of craft in which you can sit still on the water, when the water's relatively calm, and just kind of feel it go like this, I had some friends I used to go sailing with up on Lake Superior. We would go out for a three or four day weekend on like a 32 foot sailboat or something like that. And those nights sleeping on that sailboat of going like this, wow. You know, even now when I have times at night that I can't get to sleep or something, I just imagine that gentle rocking. And if we can take that place in between and turn it into a calm place where we can be with ourselves, with our friends, with our world, and consider anew who we are and what we're about. Then our new path emerges. It's then, right? Mm -hmm. It's then that something knocks somewhere some friend suggests something. We see something in the newspaper. Some divine idea comes to us. It's then in times of calm and peace and considering who we really are and to be open, that's when it comes. It doesn't come when we're tense and anxious. A number of years ago, we used to call adult students non-traditional students, right? I was at a university and it was unusual to have someone in an undergraduate class who wasn't 18, 19, 20, or 21. So we called them non-traditional students. Now it's not unusual at all, okay? But it, at that time, there was a lot of research being done then on adult students, right? How do we interact with adult students? Well, kind of the bottom line is the same way as you interact with anybody, <laughs> is, is really what it comes down to. But one of the things that they really uncovered about adults that seemed to matter a little bit more is that adult students want to be able to get along with their teacher. They want to have, isn't that shocking? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Uh, want to have a positive relationship with the teacher. And I think, you know, when people teach uh, um, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, there was probably a tradition of going, I don't really need to have a relationship with these kids, I just need to show up, All right? Sort of like that. But once there, were, there was that kind of research suggesting adult students want to have a positive relationship with their teacher, then I think you know, we started to pay attention more in general that students want to have a positive relationship with their teacher no matter what the age is. But of course what they found is people learned better when they had a positive relationship with the teacher as compared to obviously a negative relationship or a neutral relationship, which I, which I think was the format at that time was that you were kind of expected to be a teacher and have a very neutral relationship with students. But what they discovered is people learn better when they have a positive relationship. And out of that came some other observations. People learn better when they're at peace. People learn better when they're not anxious. People learn better when they're not Tense, okay? So, same thing here, right? We learn better, we pay attention better when we can take that place in between and just be there. Let the sharks go, let the tension go, and be there and settle in your most comfortable armchair. Whatever you want can envision to be there and appreciate it for what it is, right? Everything is a gift. Mm -hmm. Everything in our lives is a gift. 
Some things are really hard to imagine as gifts. But this place in between can be such a gift to reconnect with who we are, to reconnect with people in our lives, and to start anew. We just did this Mark Welch song, right? A brand new day on that new shore, beginning anew. So we begin to transform our understanding. So we take that space in between, which can feel real empty, can feel lost, can't see that shore, can't see this shore, start imagining sharks, and we can turn it into something else. Now, naturally, we have a biblical story to go with this. And this is the story of Jesus walking on the water, right? So I've shortened this passage. Early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water. And what happened to Peter? He got scared. He got scared. Okay, both things, exactly. He got scared. He got scared and he started to sink. He's grown. Sink. Ah, he got scared, exactly. But when Peter noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. Now, there's a lot in that short passage. Okay. Peter noticed the strong wind. Okay. He shifted his attention. He took his attention off of, look, Jesus is walking on the water. I can walk on the water. He went, oh, oh windy. <laughs> right? So we can ask ourselves, what's that? Distraction. Distraction. When we're in that place in between, what are we paying attention to? What are, are we paying attention to the worry, the concern, the frightened? circumstances or are we focusing on <coughs> that Christ consciousness in us and all around us and he became frightened and he began to sing right we become frightened we become tense we become anxious and we can't see our path the other shore stays out of sight or we imagine a shore right and it turns out to be a sandy island that we would sink in Right? We, we, might, right? we might grasp at something and go, that's what's next, because I don't want to be here adrift anymore. Okay? But it's to stay calm, to stay peaceful, until the real thing shows up. And then Peter cried out, yay for Peter, right? That we can remember this. We can ask for help. How many times, I do this frequently, you use a little help here. Okay. I don't know where you are. Of course I do. Right? The God self out here, here, everywhere. I can use a little help here. And we can remember this. We get to ask for help. We can ask ourselves for help through meditation, through prayer. We can ask the universe for help. We can ask friends and family for help. I need some support here. Talk to me. Help me get my confidence back. Okay? Jesus, Jesus shows up in lots of ways. We have faith that believe that Jesus is coming back someday. Unity tends to believe that Jesus is here right now. There, 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 there. Right? We are carrying that Christ consciousness with us. And we get to remind ourselves. And we get to ask other people and the Christ inside, the Christ out there, to help us. We don't just have to drown. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand. Jesus didn't go, well, I don't know. You know, you made your bed. I think maybe I'll just let you sink for a while. <laughs> Come back tomorrow, knock again, maybe I'll be home. Okay. It's not what happens. Right? We ask for help, and it's there. We just need to listen. Myrtle says this a lot. If we're not hearing, it's because we're not listening. Okay. We've got our antenna in the wrong place. So this story is loaded with messages. And then Charles reminds us, it is the prerogative of spirit to know the future. But I want to know. It's the prerogative of spirit to know the future. And when we consult spirit with pure heart and unselfish motive, <coughs> spirit points out to us the very 
lines our lives shall be cast in. We get to know the future when we pay attention. When we pay attention to spirit. What are the messages that are coming to me? What are the true messages? What are the false messages? We can come back to this quality of discernment. Dis discerning what is truly coming from spirit. And again, it's being with ourselves in the silence. Sorting that out. It's the prerogative of spirit to know the future. And sometimes we just have to sit with that. Right? I know spirit knows the future. For now, I don't need to know. And when it's time for me to know, spirit will let me know. And in the meantime, it's my job to be with myself, to understand myself, to pay attention to what's right here, right now, and build myself. Merle goes on to say something about uh, when we build our strengths and our, our, our capabilities, the opportunity will be there to cash in. She uses those words. The opportunity will be there to cash in and use our gifts. And Emily Cady, some of us just finished a, um, another uh, Unity Foundations membership course. And we use Emily Cady's Lessons of Truth. And this is one of her statements. That which fills us will radiate from us without effort, right in the place in life where we stand. And whether that's the place in between or the place on a shore, it doesn't matter. Because as we know who we are, that will radiate from us right where we stand, no matter where we stand. A number of years ago, I, was, uh, I read a lot of books about leadership and organizational stuff because that's what I was teaching. And Rosa Beth Moss Cantor coined this, coined this word, leaderful. <coughs> She said, we don't need organizations with more leaders. We need organizations that are leaderful. Meaning everybody needs to know what it is to be a leader. Everybody needs to be able to bring those, squ those qualities and skills, if only into their own lives. <coughs> it will move into the organization. Leaderful. And that's another way to think about this that our energy, our gifts, our spirit will radiate from us right where we stand, no matter where we stand. We don't have to stand in a spot that looks important to somebody else. I also read a phrase recently that said, your opinion of me is none of my business. <laughs> right? Your opinion of me is none of my business. It's my business and spirit's business and you know we'll work it out. Okay? So right where we stand, to take those qualities and skills. At which time, the place in be, oh, at which time, the space in between can simply become a place in between. The difference in the words? It's not a space anymore. It's not an empty, it's not a vacuum, it's not nothingness, it's not tension, it's not anxiety. It's a place. And the difference between the slide with the sharks all over Right? And this slide, with two people in a canoe, other people are out there, don't have to be alone, can be with other people, can be floating, can be appreciated wherever that space or that place is. So become simply a place. Now, So no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we can feel good, do good, live good. Right? Right here, right now, wherever that is. Here's a short paragraph from Myrtle. So get busy by using the truth you know. Does that sound like your mom? <laughs> get busy by using the truth you know. Love those about you in a practical way. Pay no attention to what others are doing insofar as to make comparisons. Bring forth your own joyous world of love, friendship, beauty, and plenty. God is giving everything required to build such a world. There is within you the spirit-given intelligence to build such a world. 
and it doesn't matter where you are. If you can see the old shore, if you can see the new shore, you're right here, right now, and you have the same gifts and qualities as you did when you were on that shore and when you get to that shore. So maybe you get a chance to build them and grow them in the meantime as you pass from shore to shore. So we close with, where did I put my little gadget? There it is. With these words of Myrtle, so get busy by using the truth you know. And she says, get at it. <laughs> right? No matter where you are, no matter the spot you find yourself in. Thank you.